Okay, I'm going to walk you through how to make a just a single photographic image uh, and turn it into a bitmap file that we can use in order to make a, our first layer of our screen print. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and open up Photoshop. doesn't really matter which version it is. This works pretty much the same in, in all the versions, but I'm working in the most recent one. You want to go ahead and click on Photoshop, and then you want to um, go ahead and go up here into File and go to uh, New. So we're going to create a new kind of uh, page that we're going to place our image on. And so for what we do in our shop, we can't print any bigger than 11 by 17. And we want to leave a little bit of room for registration marks. So we're going to make our um, page 16 inches wide. So we want to make sure if it says pixels up here, you click back over here on inches. So we want to go 16 inches wide by 10 inches high at 300 uh, pixels per inch resolution. So you can go ahead and just ignore this stuff, whatever it is, you want the background to be white. But you can go ahead and click on that and that'll bring up our, um, you know, the empty canvas here basically. And then we want to go to File, Place, and we want to go to Place Embedded. If you don't have this function that says Place, you can just copy and paste it in depending on which version of Photoshop you're working on. But we're going to do Place Embedded. And you want to just go ahead and pick one of these, uh, one of these images, you know, find the one that you want to work with. It doesn't matter, um, you know, what sort of, uh, if it's, you know, a landscape or whatever it is. But this is the one I'm going to work with today. And it's, you see these cross section marks in here. These are <clears throat> basically is placing it um, as a smart object. So what we want to do is we want to kind of place this thing in the image the way we want it to look. So that it kind of takes up the full space. Um, I'll go ahead and do that. And then if you hit enter, it'll go ahead and place that in there. And you see if you don't have a layers palette open, this is the palettes over here. Um, go ahead and open that up and you'll see that this has been placed uh, for us over the background. So so now all you really have to do is we want to um, adjust this however we would like to. You can adjust brightness and contrast. If you go up here to image mode, or I'm sorry, image adjustments, you should have options for that. Um, you can also do that down here where there's a uh, um, uh, brightness and contrast sort of layer property that you can put on this that you can adjust the brightness and contrast on that. Remember, we're going to turn this into black and white, so it's kind of, um, you know, you don't want to go too overboard on that stuff. Um, and you can also, sometimes you want to delete something, so I'll really quickly, Photoshop is really pretty complex, but if you want to do a, erase something, you could grab the eraser tool here, and let's say we, you know, needed to get rid of, um, you know, just some of this red stuff down here. We can use the eraser tool there and delete that. And if you go up here and you click on your eraser tool, oh, you got to make sure you have the right layer selected. So if you click on your eraser tool, it's going to have these options for how to adjust the flow and opacity. And this means that the eraser is basically going to be harder or softer. Um, so right now it's not going to let us do anything to this layer because it's, it's a smart object. So we're going to need to change that into a... Um, we're going to need to go ahead and change that layer into a rasterized layer. And so what you want to do is you want to go in here and um, control click on that. And we want to go up here and go to rasterize layer. So that's control click on a Mac, uh, right click on a PC. And just basically turn that into a layer that we can edit. So now I can go in there and if I want to get rid of some of this stuff, I can mess around with that. You can change the eraser properties by clicking up here and you can make the edges a little less hard. You can change the flow of it so if you drop that back it'll hardly erase anything at all. It'll just be a really soft eraser. So so anyway, go in there and adjust your image as much as you would like. Remember whatever you do to it now is kind of um, going to be permanent. And once we have that all set then we want to just take this color image and we want to change it into grayscale or black and white. So you go up here to image mode and you want to go to grayscale. So click on that one. And it'll ask if you want to flatten it, and you should flatten it for sure. So just say flatten. You want to discard the color information. And so now we have a black and white image, and this is basically what we're going to try and print for our first print in the, uh, uh, um, you know, for the screen printing class. So what we have to do, though, is if you zoom in on this right now, if you go, if you zoom in on it real deep, you'll see that this is a whole bunch of black uh, and gray and white pixels. So it's a whole bunch of different kinds of pixels. Um, and none of that's going to work for us in screen printing. What we need to do is we need to convert that from um, grayscale into a bunch of black and white dots. It needs to be binary. It needs to be bitmapped. So in Photoshop has this mode built in. If you go up to image mode bitmap, and what this does is this automatically changes your 
um, all those grayscale images into just black and white dots. So it does a half toning process basically. Then you always want your input resolution to match the output. So just put that into the same. Um, <clears throat> and then you will use the half tone screen pattern here. There's other options underneath that you could use if you want to play around with it, but I would suggest you use the halftone screen for this one. We'll click OK on that. And then it's going to bring up this dialog box here, and this basically is uh, asking you how big you want the dots to be. So the frequency is how big they are. If you put it in at 10, the dots are going to be huge. If you put it in at 90, the dots are going to be tiny. For screen printing works best if you keep your frequency or your lines per inch at 40 to 60 lines per inch. For our first print, I'm going to suggest we just do 40 just to keep it easy. Um, and then the angle is the angle of the screen. And so usually for a single color, you just want to do 45 degrees. I like to use the ellipse, but there's all these other options in there as well. But the ellipses tend to screen print best. And we'll just click OK on it. And you'll see this change a lot on the screen now when we hit that button. Um, but now if I zoom in on this really close, like I did before, you'll see that it's changed it. This is 300%. It's changed it from all those gray pixels to just black and white binary dots. And so it looks terrible on the screen, but basically this is um, exactly what we want because this is how screen printing works best is with you know, dots. So if I look at this now and I look up here and I see all of this grayscale stuff that's up here and what I would like it to be white, then I know that I probably need to go in there and adjust my uh, contrast more to get rid of that and make sure that the paper background is pure white or else this is all going to print little dots, which could work fine for your print, but it would probably be um, better to go back and change that um, if you want to make sure that it just all keeps stays clean and precise. If I was doing this for my own work, I would definitely go in and change that now. So, But just for the sake of argument, let's say this looks right, we're ready to go. All you have to do now is just go to Print. So you want to go to File print and again your printers will look different depending on what you're printing on but we will be printing probably on this print uh, secure print printer here at uh, at the school and you'll see there are these print settings so let's go ahead and click on that <clears throat> and it's going to bring up uh, the paper size and we want to make sure we select tabloid which is 11 by 17 make sure there's only one page per sheet uh, and click save on that um, Okay, and so you can see now our image fits onto there. Don't worry about how terrible this looks. This is just the way that Photoshop represents it. So then the only other thing we really want to mess with now is we want to go in here and you never ever want to scale it. You want to make sure your scale stays at 100%. And then the other thing you want to do is you want to click on the printing marks. And we want to go ahead and go with registration marks. And you see how it added these little dots on there for us, right? Um, so now all you have to do is you just want to send it to print. So you'll send it to the printer press print, it should bring up that dialog box that asks you if you want to charge it to your account. You say yes. And then you can go back over to the printer and before it prints, you want to make sure that you select the manual tray. So we can probably uh, play around with that a little bit here. But if we go back to our print settings, um, let's see, where it says layout, you want to go to paper handling and um, paper feed, I'm sorry. You want to go to paper feed and make sure you select the manual feed too. So. Um, different printers do all the stuff different. You guys always have to play with a little bit, but I always suggest you print it on a piece of paper first before you print it on your transparency. Um, but basically, we'll just kick this thing out of the printer at 11 by 17, and then we'll be ready to do some other stuff to it. So that's how it works to bitmap a single a single image. You're just basically taking a color image, turning it into black and white, um, adjusting it, and then we're uh, bitmapping it.